uh, in the service on this morning and call somebody and let them know that I ground is on the air. We expecting God to show up even on this day of celebration. And as we celebrate, the, the scripture gives us to know that God inhabited the praises of his people. So as we praise God and as we lift up the name of Jesus, we're expecting God to show up and to show out in the midst of his people. You can get what you came for. Come on, tell us why you get what you came for. And we come to the more blessing. There's a blessing with your name on it. And we give him praise. Hallelujah. We open up our service as normal as usual. We open up with prayer, and we know that prayer is going to be made. And the Bible says that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person does avail much. And blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. So as we praise God, we ask now that you will prepare your hearts and minds yeah. to receive our morning prayer. And if you've got a prayer request, yeah. let your request be made known yeah. unto God. Yeah. And if you've got a wayward son, a wayward daughter, you've got issues in your home, yeah. relationship issues, God knows exactly what you need. Yeah. We're praying that God will send the help that you need. Do I have a witness today? Yeah. God will help you at the point of your need. Yeah. Petitions known on today, we ask that the Lord will hear our cry and to rescue us as He has always yes, done in the past. I'm going to ask the your friend Rogers if we would come at this time and he's going to offer prayer uh, for us and for you on this morning as He comes. Every heart and every mind, Lord, pray along with Him. Yes, he's coming at this time. Let's say amen for Him as He comes.
Hey, free me. Hallelujah. I surrender, my Lord. Use us on today. Free us from all unclean and wicked spirits, my Lord. Deliver our minds, my Lord. Cast out the devil among the children, my Lord. These young adults and teenagers, Father. We bind the hand of the enemy. Hey, we plead the blood of Jesus. Shutting everywhere, Father. Look upon the world today, my Lord. Here we are praying for complete healing, Father. Complete the miracles, complete the world turnarounds, Father. That you will get the glory. Use the Lord today, my Lord. Touching here, saving the deliver, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Touch our leader on today. That's the God and first lady, my Lord. Mindset, Father, that you want them to have, Father. Hey, glory to God. Free them, my Lord, for the stress, my Lord, the struggles and the ups and downs and the problems, my Lord. Help them to focus on what you want them to focus on, my Lord. Help them on today. Strengthen them, my Lord. Encourage them the more, my Lord. Let them know, my Lord, that a delay does not mean a denial. Hallelujah. That you will surely bring it to pass, my Lord. Hey, just wait and be patient, my Lord, and keep you first. He will reap the rewards. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. And we thank the Lord for our leader, Pastor Carter. Continue to bless him, my Lord. Continue to keep him from out of the hospital beds. He on out into your call and home to glory. This is our prayer. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' eternal name. In Jesus' everlasting name. It is so. It's so it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jefferson and I'm yes, man. Come on, let's give her a hand to the And I have to accept the seat right there. And we thank God God has touched her body and given her another uh, lease on life. And she's going to be our scripture reader for this morning. Let's say amen for her. Mother Shirley Jefferson is going to read our scripture. Our scripture is coming from the 27th Psalm. Our Lord is my life. That's it. And my salvation. Yes, sir. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. 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 The wall shall rise against 
and sing. Yes. 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 One thing I have yes. and I will seek out. Yes. services and we are so thankful for all of your contributions and your gifts and acts of kindness and I thank you for my birthday celebration on last week. Thank you. I appreciate all of these brothers that are here with us on today and the day is Father's Day so I get to double up on everybody yeah. on this month. <laughs> celebrating God has been good to us and I'm so grateful and so thankful just to be here. I was telling them during the celebration the other day, Mother, that just two years ago, right at this time, my God. that I was struggling and, and fighting really for my very life. Oh my but let me say, but God. But God brought me out and brought me through. And even now, as we go forward, we're looking for God. And now I told him last week, I'm going to agree with God. God, you was right all the time. I just need to come into conformance of your will. So I'm getting better at that as we move forward, even on today. Happy Father's Day to all of you fathers that are out there on today. Come on, let's celebrate you can say right now. Amen. I think it's no good today is Father's Day. We're also celebrating our Juneteenth celebration, yes, uh, which is acknowledged over nationally now, but we've been celebrating it for a long time. Uh -huh. I was telling one of my brothers the other day, I said, I don't really need the government's permission to celebrate. Uh -huh. Y'all give me that. I've been doing this all the time. I've been doing it a lot. We just made it official last year, but we've been celebrating all along. So we appreciate that. And we have to say, as you continue to view the broadcast, we have some new uh -huh. things that we want to add in addition to our uh, our presentation, we actually have a YouTube channel, and I ask that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. We can be coming directly from our YouTube channel, and I'm trying to put that out. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Thank God for all of our viewers nationwide. They're right. tuning into it, but we give we are added that platform as well. We have to do it all in conjunction at the same time. And we have a new app, and we ask that you would also load that on your phones. We're going to be having you to use your mobile devices. And whether you're Android or your iPhone, you can go right to your store, the Google or the Google Play, and um, go and hide, look for High Ground Outreach. And it'll show the HGO symbol. You just tap on that symbol, and you can get all of our events and all of our special announcements all during the week, all during the month. You know what's going on with us and about us. Amen. I'm going to be using that even more so. So we ask that you would go to that particular app. Go to your phone and just download it. Some of y'all can download it right now. And you'll see it. It's going to come right up with the HGO symbol. Uh, and that is High Ground Outreach. And that is on your mobile app, whether you got an iPhone with the Apple Store, or whether you got an Android with the Google Play. You can go right to it now. Amen. Amen. So do that and we join in with the other uh, saints and we'll continue to do better. That means that we got to do better. And we've been doing better. But we thank God for all of you that are here with us on today uh, as we celebrate. Thank God for Ella Eden. Amen. God knows I enjoyed it on last Sunday. I was telling you. Amen. The Lord needs it. And we'll get to pray that the Lord will hear the prayer of the saints. And the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name will just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from them in prayer. Then they from heaven, he will forgive their sins and he will heal their land. 
Amen. And I believe in God to hear our prayer and be a prayer for our country, for our leaders, amen. Uh, and because the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And I believe it's us, the people of God, that are going to make the difference in this country. And we're praying that God will strengthen you for such a time as this. We ask that you would continue to like and to share it as you share this morning with your offerings. You still may do so with our Givelify app. We still have that app available uh, for you to use. Uh, and that is the, uh, just go to the High Ground Outreach Church. Amen. And you give the fire out, you can give your tithe and your offering. We appreciate those of you that's been doing that consistently. And it's been my contention that even I try not to beat the people up because I believe that God got the best people in the world. And that which you know that's right. You don't have to be coerced. You don't have to be made to be shamed to do it. Amen. I believe you do it because it's right. And as you give your offering, even if you do it through the Cash App application, we appreciate those. And I want to let you know that all of this is funneled to the same area. It's going right to our church uh, bank account, not to our, not to my personal bank account. It's actually going to the church bank account. Yeah. And those call signs are a dollar sign C C E F C. I'll say it again: it's a dollar sign C C E F C. Uh -huh. You can do that at this time. So we appreciate those mediums of giving by which we can use, and some of them are giving and not even here. And we thank God for our remote listeners, those that can't get here. They're yet supporting and they let us know. Keep on doing what you're doing. And so I appreciate all of the prayers and all the support that you have given us up until this time. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Uh, we're praying, amen. I'm praying for those few babies. I had my list. I don't know what I did with my list, but I think myself is on it. Amen. I know I'm on each other just now. Amen. And I think uh, Sister Sherilla Ethan also on the 13th of June. Amen. I don't know what I listed. Amen. And I thank God for Sister Destiny Jefferson on the 18th as well. Brother Trenton Oliver on the 20th. Uh -huh. And Brother Jack King Rogers on the 23rd. Come on, let's celebrate. Uh -huh. Amen. We pray that the Lord will bless you for your effort. Uh, at this time, we want to share with you from the word of the Lord. Today is Father's Day. And uh, it will be remiss as we also celebrate the June 10th, Juneteenth celebration uh, that we are commemorating this year. And uh, we thank God for the experience, even though it has been such a rough past, but God has brought us to this point at this time. And I'm grateful for what the Lord has done. Now, I don't know, I didn't give him an opportunity to get himself together. I don't know if Reverend Bertie is from St. Paul's today. Now, I didn't give him an opportunity, but if he's ready to sing and say, say on some, yeah, selection for us, amen. Somebody got to give him a mic. Amen. Amen. We're going to get the mic so that we can uh, have him to sing. It was a selection. And as they're preparing to do that, I ask that you will continue to like and to share uh, during our service. Uh, the Lord has truly blessed us and we're coming out even more. Uh, during, even though we're not out of the pandemic as of yet, I believe God has given us a little reprieve that we can kind of get around and do a little bit more. Summer is coming and people are doing a little bit more than they did normally. but. Pandemic, I realize it's not going anywhere. And you know, we're yet believing God that yeah. He is going to protect us. I just believe that, that God's going to protect us uh, during this time and during this period by which we're experiencing not just uh, here in America, but net, but worldwide. It's going on all over the place. At this time, I'm going to ask Reverend Ted if he would come and he would give us a selection and we'll be back uh, with the word from the Lord. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's setting your heart and to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not going to be long. Uh, I'm going to just sing this song. I haven't sung this in a while, but right, sir. it's a song that goes like this, y'all. I'm sure y'all familiar with it. Uh -huh. But this goes like this. Lord, you are good. Yes. You've been so good. Uh -huh. Lord, you are good. You've been very, very good. I
from the executive of the United States of America. All slaves are free. Yes. There was approximately over 250,000 slaves that were yet enslaved after the signing because they didn't have social media, they didn't have Facebook, they didn't right. have Twitter, they didn't have Instagram, they had word of mouth and Pony Express. So the word didn't get down to Texas, and maybe it did, but those uh, uh, resistant slave holders, and I do call them slave holders, not saying slave owners, those slaveholders refused to let the information get transmitted to their slaves, which were being held captive. Yes. So we thank God for this day. That's why we celebrate. Yes. Even though it didn't happen in the time frame that the rest of them, they still got the word. Mm -hmm. Even though it was late, but the delay is not a denial. No, uh -huh. even day. Sometimes you get something late, but it's not necessarily a denial. So this sort of is like an independence day. Y'all with me? Come on, let's celebrate. It's like an independence day. And those that were eventually got the word that they had been free. And they were able to go about, which brought about the signing of the 13th Amendment, hanging down the Constitution of the United States. And we're so glad and thank God that God is, he doesn't, he is no respecter of persons. And even after the Civil War had ended, there were yet skirmishes that were going on. But thank God they got the word down in Texas that the slaves were free. That's why we're part of the reason why we celebrate with music and with picnics and with gatherings and festivals and coming together, singing songs and rejoicing and blessing God for the deliverance that he alone was able to win. 
That's why we celebrate that. That's the first part. And I'm happy about it because I thank God for my ancestors that were probably part of that initial celebration. That's why we continue it on throughout our generations. My young people need to know it. Our other brothers and sisters need to know about it as well. Because it is a cause for celebration. Come on, give God a praise one more time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're praying to thank God for independence. Uh, even though it was late, amen, it still got there. So we thank God for Juneteenth. And as we celebrate this Father's Day as well, I'll be talking to you generally about the role of a perfect father. And even though might be some of us cannot make the statement that we've had a perfect father, and probably all of us can testify that we have not had because we have our flaws as well. But we're going to begin by wishing all of you a happy Father's Day out there. And we're going to be asking God to bless you and keep you uh, during this period of time that we're living in. And we thank God for all of you that do, uh, that you have for your families, of course. And we pray that God will strengthen you even the more to fulfill your role in your families. Being a father is a very important responsibility. It's one of the most difficult jobs on this planet. Yeah. I know many fathers can attest to that. It has not been easy. It has not been, you know, a flower bed of ease. We've had many challenges as we end, especially now with the economic crunch and we're trying to provide for us. And father does mean provider. It means uh, protector. It means sustainer. And we're going to be talking about God, how that he, ex he, he exemplifies all of these attributes of being a provider. I'm talking in the Sunday school today how that we're talking about the celebration of Jubilee and how that God made provision even for the land. He made provision that the land would rest. Isn't that just like God? God said, if we don't put some kind of standard and some type of uh, stipulation, we would never stop working. And we'd kill the land. We'd kill it because it would be non-productive. But God said, there will be a time. Out of seven years of seven years' times, I forgot seven. And it will be 49. And on the 50th year, there will be a cause of Jubilee. And that was a release. That was an independence day of sort. Uh, to even the land that gave rest. Y'all not talking back to me. But God provided for us and he helped sustain the world and the earth. And we praise God for even now as we currently face and providing for our families and maintaining a proper balance and sanctity as we press toward in this modern day society with expectation. God is still our father. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that believe that being a father is the ability to produce children. I come to tell you today, that's not making you no father. Amen. And I come, amen, <laughs> because any healthy male can produce children. Mm -hmm. But we are going to be dealing with what it really means, people of God, to be a father. Mm -hmm. And what a father is in God's design mm -hmm. for the human family. Mm -hmm. It was by God's design that he said it was. Well, he didn't give an alternative family. It was a man, woman, and children. Y'all not going to like me today, but I'm going to talk about it. But somebody got to tell it. Glory to God. Father's Day originated, and this is an American tradition, uh, because it was on June 19th in 1910 that the first Father's Day was celebrated and took place. And it was by a woman. I thank God for women. Amen. <laughs> by a woman by the name of Sonora Dodd, the daughter of an American Civil War veteran, William Jackson Smart had requested the Spokane Ministerial Alliance to observe June 5th, which was her father's birthday, to honor fatherhood. And I think good fathers ought to be honored all throughout this world. Yeah. And it is said that her and her five brothers were raised by the father after the death of their mother. I'm just giving you a little bit of history. Yeah. That was a tough job for men to raise children. But it's happening now. Y'all know that's happening now. Yeah, yeah. It's not always fathers that abandon the children, but sometimes mothers right. abandon, bending under the pressures of being a parent. Yeah, yeah. So it happened in the case of William Smart. It was a tough job. Hallelujah. But being a single family, he unfortunately, sometimes this happens. But God enables us to carry out our responsibilities yeah. with his divine help. Uh -huh. So initially, it was going to, I was going to talk about another subject on today. I was going to go a little different, and I think it is really the quintessential example of a perfect model of a father in the story of the prodigal son's father in the book of St. Luke, the 15th yeah. chapter. We're all familiar with that particular chapter, aren't we? Yeah. Talks about the father and how that he scanned the horizons looking for the return of his son after he had demanded 
to get all that he was coming to him, even before the demise of his father. And then I reread that story this morning. I looked at it and it says, and he gave them both. And he gave them their inheritance. It was only one that left. But the elder brother, and I can imagine that's probably why he had attitudes in birth. Because he didn't leave. He got it because he gave them both their inheritance when they demanded that when he demanded that he give all that would fall unto him. But he stayed. And therefore, probably because his uh, uh, disagreement and his uh, displeasure, because he said, I stayed here. I've been with you all the time. But yet and still, I find you scanning this horizon looking for that wayward child. Let him go. But the father, being just like God, didn't let it go, didn't give up on the son. I'm going to talk about that. How that unconditionally, he still loved that boy. Even though he had transgressed the family tradition of staying there and working as a, one of the heirs of his father's inheritance. Right. But he left and he, but he came back. But he came to himself. Yes, uh -huh. Thank God. As God gives us an opportunity. I think that's a great display of grace. Mm -hmm. And God gives us grace to be able to come back. And to make a comeback, he came to himself yeah. by being in the hall pen. Y'all know the story? He came to himself and realized that he said, my father got hired servants that are doing better than I am. He rehearsed his interview with himself and said, this is what I'm going to tell my daddy when I get back home. He said, father, I have sinned against heaven and before I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. But the, but the, the father wasn't having it. Uh -huh. He still was his son. Yes, like sometimes our children mess up, but guess what? Yes, they still our children. Amen. Amen. I ain't get too many amens there. Amen. I don't think you can dis disinherit the biological connection that God made when you produce seed. But he had an attitude that even though he had messed up, and still had a ray of hope that he might come to himself and come back home. And I believe that type of hope was what really uh, drove the fact that he came back eventually because he knew that his daddy wasn't going to beat him up. He knew that his daddy, y'all not talking back to me, wasn't going to say, I told you so. And you should have listened to me. I'm going to let you suffer. I'm going to let Maud kick you. As we say sometimes in our vernacular, I'm going to let life get you where it hurts. And maybe you'll wake up. But that was not their father's attitude. He was looking every day expecting. And y'all know that he, when he came, he ran and embraced him and got him a fatted cab and put a ring on his face and put shoes on his feet. Oh, y'all not saying anything about that. But that's the type of father that really was displayed in the story, but it really exemplifies how God yes, deals with us. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. And I thank God that he didn't give up on me. Because I would agree with it. Some of you, if you tell the truth, y'all have not done all what you're supposed to do. Oh, I thought I was big and bad enough myself. And I left home when I was very young. And, but there have been many a days that I say, I'm going to do just like this prodigal son. I'm going to rise. And I'm going to get up and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. Can I have my bed back? Can I be able to sit at the table and not have to worry about where the food came from? Y'all not going to talk to me today. But many of us have been in a situation that we really regretted and say, I made a mistake, but I got to get, they tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go back home. It is, it is fortunate that you can come back. But then there are others that cannot come back. So, but that does not mean that God does not love you. And I want you to know that God loves you unconditionally. But that's the role of a father as displayed in the case of the prodigal son. How a man is supposed to father his children, husband his wife, and the father of his community. And to remain sometimes unclear and uncertain, especially in our day. What are we supposed to do now when it seems like men are being castrated and being uh, sterilized it's going to make none effect in the family? And I don't want to go back through the history and how that in our African American culture there have been many times by which they have made it very difficult for the man to be in the house. Amen. Go back to the 70s and rehearse the things and the programs that were put in place. How it made it almost illegal for the daddy of the children to be in the house. Amen. It was not by accident, but it was by design. Amen. Because men are important. Y'all hear me say men are important. Amen. Because without men, there could be no mothers. Amen. Right. Amen. Let me move on. <laughs> but the father, heaven say the father. Who 
rising the bodies at the bottom of the family. He upholds the family. Yeah. He is a male. Uh -huh. He is the foundation of the family. Yeah. But what makes the male the father? Yeah. It is a Hebrew word which means Abba. Yeah. Which literally means the source. Yeah. Man is the source. He is the sustainer. Yeah. It also means foundation. And being in building, the foundation is so very important in order for the house or the, the building to come up correctly. Uh -huh. In order for the family to be come up correctly, there has to be some type of foundation. Amen. Can y'all say amen? amen? The male was made out of the soil. Uh -huh. Doing the research and trying to go back to the book of Genesis and see what God's original intent because now they're trying to redefine what the family is. And I think it's our job as Christians, as men and women of God, to really put a proper spin on what God really intended. God went to the soil and made out of the dust of the ground, made he the man. God made one human from the soil. And guess what? He never went back. Didn't go back and make a woman. There are no two separate or groups of two separate human families. He went to the soil one time. And from that one time, he made the man. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Because everybody was in him. Uh -huh. Woman was in him. Because he put the man to sleep. Y'all know that, don't you? And how, how, why he was asleep, God performed the first operation. And took the rib of the man and made he the woman. And when Adam said, now you are bone of my bone. You are now flesh of my flesh. You shall be called woman. That was God's original intent. God did not come from the woman, but the woman came from the man. Oh, y'all won't hear me this morning. First Corinthians 11 and 8 gives us clarity. Paul talks about it. For the man is not the woman, is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Man has a specific place in the family. So I'll read it again. I don't need y'all to read it. First Corinthians 11 and 8 says... For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Verse 9 continues, continues that says, Neither was a man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. That's right. I feel the cold spirits today, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. So saints, we have to be careful of listening to all of this modern day rhetoric, this new age philosophy, this take, talking about mother God. There is no mother God. It's father God. Yes, sir. God, hallelujah. God is the source. He is the foundation. Point number one, so man is the foundation of the family. I want y'all to remember this because I'm just talking. I'm not really preaching, but I'm trying to teach a little bit this morning. So the man is the foundation of the family. Yeah. Why do you think it is so much pressure put on the man to take him out of the picture? Mm. There are so many devices that are designed to get you to eliminate you Amen. out of the picture. Right. Because now it puts undue pressure on the woman that tried to serve in both capacities. Yeah. 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 In the raising of the children. Yeah. That's not by accident. That's by design. That's right. It's important that men be men in their rightful places. Uh -huh. Because it puts a different spin. I know of my father being home, it stopped me from doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. Because uh -huh. I knew I had a daddy that answered to. Uh -huh. But even in the case of some women, very strong, very able, yes, to carry the weight. They have reared their children in such respect and such dignity that they turn out well. Uh -huh. Even though the father was not present in the home. So it can happen, but that's not God's original intent. Right. And I'm saying today that we need to go back to God's original intent. Right. Pepper said we need to go back, to, go back. to God's God. original, original intent. intent. God already had it planned. It's not by accident. Hallelujah, but he had it planned. And because the word means Abba, it means sustainer. It means source. Yeah. Whatever came out of you, watch this, y'all. You also are to sustain it. Mm -hmm. Whatever came out of you, as in God's case, He created the world. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein, He created it all. And guess what? He sustains it all. Because He is the what? Father. So, what does that tell us as our role as fathers? 
we are to sustain what came out of us. All right, right. If we produce children, we need to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 The best way that we can. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say it anyhow now because it's true. Because I'm talking about what God's original intent was. Yeah, he right. sustains what came out of you. Right. So if it came out of you, it's your responsibility yeah, yeah. to take care of it. Yeah. And I can stand flat footed and say it. Yeah. Brother, let us not sink in for, for the moment. Let, let that sink in. Let it sink in for a moment. Right. Because God is called Father because of all creation came out of him. God is called Father not just because he creates things, but because he also sustains things. Uh -huh. John 1 and 3 gives us a note, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made me. Y'all write these down. Colossians 1 and 17 gives us to know also, and he is before all things. And by him all things consist or are sustained. God the Father, he is the progenitor, he is the beginning. Pro meaning support. Uh -oh. Got to support what came out of you. I'm trying to help Christian brothers and non-Christian brothers That's as well. Right. We talk yeah. about the role of father. You don't have to be saved to be a father. That's right. <laughs> but you do need to understand what your role is. Right. Right. Amen. Lights and walls. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pro means support and gene or gen is from genetics. Yeah. We support which came out of us. Right. And the genes of the human family came out of the man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. This, even though we love, respect, and appreciate the woman in all of our lives and in society, they can never replace males. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That is why the Bible says, honor your father Amen. and then your mother. Amen. It is the first command of God that has a promise attached to it. Amen. Listen, saints, fathering is a position. I'm going to try to write that. Fathering is a position. And a function, mm -hmm. not a title That's right. okay. or name. Or That's name. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a position. You yeah. operate as cover. You operate as provider. You operate as source. Mm -hmm. You operate as a uh, sustainer. It is a, it's a it's a position and a function, not a title. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. Come on now. Father is not the name of God. Uh -huh. Father is the result of the function. And a position that God performs and operates mm -hmm. as a result of what came out of him. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't hear me today. Glory to God. All creation came out from God. Why do you think the sun is still standing in the sky after all of these millions of years? Because God says, I made it. And I'm going to sustain it. Yes, sir. It never gets too close or it's never too far away because he would not be the sustainer if it killed us. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, now. The thaw going to fall out of the sky and, and, and annihilate us because God holds them in their place. With the firmament of the Lord, he holds those things in place. Oh my God. He created the waters that they don't come over their bounds. Even though the earth is, is covered with three-fourths of water, it never overrides us. Because guess what? God set the bound. Y'all don't give it to He sustains all of that, and he doesn't need your permission to do it because it came out of him. So that tells me nobody should have to tell us what our responsibilities are. We should understand it just by looking at God. What does God do about it? He sustains the seasons as we look at it from a natural standpoint. We go through summer, fall, and winter, and autumn, and but yet it's still God keeps them separate. And as long as the earth remains, there will be seasons. Because guess what? God sustains. All right, all right. Don't have to tell him to do it. He does it because he came. I don't get quiet on me today. He was the source which automatically made him the father of all creations. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He is the father because of what he did. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not a name. Mm -hmm. 
The male is the father of the human family, not because of the name, but because of the function which he performs. If you're not performing, And that's <laughs> that's why we're saying you gotta you gotta be going somewhere because it's difficult for women to follow you if you're not going nowhere. Right. You gotta be doing something. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just be idle and say, I'm gonna let you leave. No, you gotta be doing the sustaining part, you gotta be doing a function, you gotta be doing something that really would at least make her at least willing to follow you. Because she's going to say, well, look, you know what? I'm okay. Do this to you. Bye. I'm going to do this by myself. Amen. But that's not God's original intent. Y'all ain't liking me this morning. Right. Point number two, and I'm making some points this morning. Oh, yeah. Point number one, that God, that man is the foundation of the family. Mm -hmm. Point number two, the position and the function of the father must be honored. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get in trouble on this yes, one. Sir. The position and the function of a father must be be honored. The Bible does not say honor the male. It says honor your father. It is a function and a position. And so you so called you are uh, amen. you know it never tells us to love our fathers. Because we do it because it's our responsibility. I used to know this is my daddy. Don't y'all talk about my daddy. But I, we, we would um, have Christmas. He loved Christmas. And he would go all out for Christmas, and you know, I'd be wanting some other things. I wanted some tennis shoes, and during that time, it was Chuck Taylor Converse and a whole lot of other stuff that we were seeing the other children wear. And he was like, you know, no. <laughs> he said, "You see this house? Merry Christmas." He said, "You see, you got food on your table. Merry Christmas, y'all." And also, that was cold blood. But he was sustained in us. Y'all yes, got a roof on your head. You're not hungry. You got food to eat. Merry Christmas. <laughs> because he uh, maybe under I don't know if he read this, but I read it. He, he was on he was on that part. So I shut up and stopped asking. Because I won't home. And I did have a roof over my head. Amen. Hallelujah. So I appreciate him. And I say, well, maybe I don't want to be the coat that cut and dry, but sometimes that might be necessary. So sometimes our children are so entitled, they think you ought to do these yes, things. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. They think you ought to do it because they, well, you got it. And you don't know whether they got it or not. You don't know all of their responsibilities and obligations. And if you're not outdoors, you got food, you got clothes, amen. And I think when we got those things, we take those things for granted. Yes, but we're probably in the top 10% of this world's population that have those things. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. And really, all these things consist of food, clothing, and shelter. Y'all listening to me this morning. I hope I'm making sense. Now I have to throw my head behind my ear, but I hope I'm making sense because I'm a father. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to be the best father that I possibly can be. Yes, but I know my responsibility is to take care of that girl right there. Uh -huh. And I'm not only that, but to take care of them children that I made by her. Y'all don't hear me today. She didn't do that by herself. I was part and parcel of that. That's why she called me my baby's dad. That's why she called me. Amen. Amen. All right. And I respect that because I am. I don't want to be no. I ain't taking it, man. I'm just saying I am a baby's dad. And I say I acknowledge my position and my function, and I'm gonna try to do it the best of my ability. I'll say be man if you can. Amen. But then you must honor the position. You cannot help. Your daddy, amen. You cannot help who your daddy is. Amen. Watch this. God never says to love your fathers, and I mentioned that. It says honor your fathers. That yes. means respect yes. their position, respect yes. their uh, function. Yes. And some of them don't do it all like we would like them to do it, but because that is your source and the function that brought you here. Mm -hmm. They did it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Point number three, and I'm moving along. All right, uh, Fathers must earn the right to be honored. Oh. Mm -hmm. Fathers must earn the right mm -hmm. 
to be honored. Yeah. Not because you had a baby makes you a father. Right. So don't be so quick to claim that you are the father. You are not the father. <laughs> I hear you, Mom. I hear you, Mom. Mom is cold. Amen. But that does not make you. So don't be so quick to claim that you are the father of that child because you may be only a half father. Amen. You may just be the sperm donor. You provided the sperm, but you do not, and you did not provide the support. Yeah, yeah. I'm, on, I'm on that today. Right, 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 right. We must change that narrative. Mm -hmm. We're not absentee, yeah. but we're going to be the supporters. You do yeah. not. You didn't. You did not provide the. You did not provide the covering, mm -hmm. the financial and the emotional support that was needed. Yeah. That's what fathers do. Amen. I'm talking about the role of a father today. Tell somebody that's what fathers do. That's a function. That's what we do. That's a position. We're taking our, taking our business seriously because that's what God did. So whenever we get confused, all we got to do is go to the book. God, what did you do? You took care of Israel even though they was hard-headed. You chastised them. And even as you show us in Hebrews, what father is he that chast chastens not his children? Amen. And we gave them reverence. Uh-huh. Ain't that what it said, Saint? It said so. We may not agree with everything they said, but we gave them reverence, oh, yeah. meaning we respected them. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Number four, number four, and I'm moving. To honor fathers also implies that fathers can be dishonored. Mm -hmm. It's possible to also dishonor your father. Mm -hmm. When you dishonor your father, you also dishonor your sports. And that's why we got to be so especially careful, people of God, when we say anything and talk anyway to our fathers and to our mothers. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. Y'all read it in there. Galatians 6, uh, is it Ephesians, Ephesians 6, it talks about honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land with the Lord thy God giving thee. I believe that's the reason I'm still here. And I believe there's a reason a lot of us are still here. And I say I agree with everything what my mother said and did. And my father said and did. I wanted to say a whole lot of stuff. But I knew I had a daddy, even though he was 4'11", 5 foot tall, that would come to me and bring me down the sides. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? So fear was a factor. It kept me in line. Because I thought I was big. I've been this size since I was 17 years old. Pretty much. Just a few pounds heavy. Don't y'all say nothing about that. But I'm just saying, I was this side. Mm -hmm. And he, I was always pretty much over him. And I looked down on him. But I respected him. Mm -hmm. I respected the function. See this house? And I always say, so I didn't try to do that to my sisters. I didn't try to do that to my children. But I tried to give them at least a bounce or some skates or something. For the Christmas, <laughs> for the Christmas time. I said, you see this car you all driving in? Merry Christmas. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I try to give them some something to go on. Amen. We just now, I don't know how y'all got what kind of family y'all were raised in. He gave us an apple, an orange, and some some uh, some nuts. <laughs> that was Christmas. <laughs> and mama said, don't, don't try to fuss or shut up. Your daddy, your daddy got this way. That's it. So she helped us to respect even the nuts and the apple and the orange. But <laughs> and we try to do that to this generation of children. We're gonna have to break them down like a shot. We're gonna have to beat them. We're gonna have to fight them. Because they're gonna say, What is this? I get this all the time. But for Kevin, that was Christmas for us. Yes, sir. And we were just as happy. We were broken yes, we and just as oh, didn't even have the other open pole. Just hold, oh, oh. hold. <laughs> but we respected our parents. Kept us out of jail. Hallelujah. Stayed home when they say stay home. Didn't sneak out. I tried to sneak out, but didn't sneak out often. But it kept me out of jail. And I look back now. That's right. All of my people that I ran with, they can last a lot of my rent. They dead. Oh my God. Yeah. I believe it. They dishonored their parents. Yeah. They dishonored them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What it means is you, you can't cuss your mama out. That's right. Mm-hmm. Never. Never. Uh, yeah. You're treading on dangerous ground. Yeah. That's right. God hear everything. Yeah. 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 And the commandment is true. Yeah. Honor. Honor. You gotta yeah. respect your soul. Yeah. Come on, you ought to give God a praise yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You cannot undermine your foundation. Yeah. It's yeah. like the father is the tree. And the tree is not better than the root. Yeah. So if the root is right, the fruit is in trouble. Yeah. Leaves and the branches are in trouble. So if you curse your root, you destroy your tree. Yeah. My God, my God, God, help me. Holy Ghost, help me today. Yeah. I'm trying to tell this truth is that you have given it unto me. Because it's important that we do this. And this, this generation has a, has a tendency to disrespect often. And it's dangerous ground. Because many persons, I believe, that would normally have been here have dis, has dishonored their parents. Yeah. And they are no longer because the commandment says that your days may be long. And I don't know about you, I wanted to live a long yes, time. Amen. 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 I'm not Jimmy the Cricket. I want to live to be 103, but I want to hang around a long time. That's right. I look at my I look at my parents, I look at my, my, my people and my ancestors. Right. They, they are long livers. And I look yeah. back and I do the research, Brother T. And found I got an aunt that's 98 years old, still in the right mind. Yeah. Still yeah. shining and dancing. Yeah. 11 children, never worked nowhere. Yeah. She only Papa. That's right. She looked out for her. And guess what? Her children looked out for her. Yeah. She ain't got a little finger to do nothing. Yeah. And I said, that's why you still run around the church and shout, I see you, I see you. I see you. But I followed that example on her. Parents, yeah. that your days may be long. She ain't in, uh, in her right mind. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. Uh, very, very adamant. Leave me alone. I can take care of myself. Yeah. You are hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Help say, but God, God is faithful. Yeah. Come, come and give God a praise. I tell you, I, I want to be just like that. I told him when I grow up, I'm gonna be just like you. I want to be shouting around here at 98 years old. Y'all don't hear me today. I want to be rejoicing and giving God the praise. Even though I'm here, I'm going to have my past mid age. But because God's word is true, he says, honor your parents that your days may be long upon the land that the Lord thy God giveth you. And I believe God is true. That his word is true. And he will honor you as you honor your parents. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Don't curse the root. Because words are powerful. Amen. Yes. And God hears every word. Yes. The number one crisis on earth today for men is the absence of fatherhood. I'm talking about the role of fathers today. Here today is Father's Day. The fatherhood role model. The male is lacking a biblical example of someone uh, to model himself by. And I honestly believe that when God says, I'm going to make man in our image. It was not the image that I see a lot now. Just don't believe it was the image of the baggy pants. Don't believe it was the image of the unkept, un-un-un-un-un person. I said, God, are you like that? No. I don't think so. So we need good role models. Somebody has to step out of the crowd and say, I will not conform. Fatherhood role models. Male is lacking that biblical image. Most come from generations of fathers that did not have a good role model. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we mimic that behavior. Children are great imitators. Mm-hmm. Yes, Most of the time, and we say it oftentimes, if your father was abusive, all the time, if you grew up in that environment, yes. it's likely, it's very probable yes, that you may be an abuser. Yes, because you saw that mimic in your father. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you definitely need the help of God to not to follow that negative role model. Right. You need to model yourself out of what God originally intended. For and I appreciate my children and my wife, and of course I have not done everything perfectly, but I can remember so vividly when the daddy came home, it was a time of celebration. 
It wasn't a time of cowering and not knowing what was going to happen. Is he going to beat us because he had a bad day? Y'all, I don't know why I'm saying that. Because some of us come from abusive situations. And it's just and dysfunctional. But it's the grace of God that we're here today. And that ought to be cause for celebration. I survived all of that and still got my right mind. But I remember, but I remember trying to come home. I was working hard and dusty, and I was dirty when I came home. But when I came home, the kids said, Daddy home. And they ran because they knew they were going to get some unconditional love. They were going to get some unconditional attention from the head of the family. I didn't push them away and say, get off my leg. But I said, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, man, bless y'all. And I just, I don't know all what we did. Didn't know what I was doing. So it's work, but I tried to follow God's model and try to be the model person for my family. Hallelujah. And I think with this bad witness that we ought to try to change the narrative now. If I have not been doing well, if I have not been the role that God intended for me to be, I need to get in line now. Now that I know God is a perfect example, now that I know that God's original intent was the model, the behavior of him, himself, by which he already displayed, we need to follow God's example. Help us say we need to follow God's example. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. And that is why it's so important that fathers be a good role model for their children. Because eventually one day they're going to grow up. And they're going to have children. And what do they have as a model? What do they have as, a, as an emblem of, of something to follow as an ensign? What did they see displayed before them? If they saw all abuse and all of negativity, guess what would probably happen if God doesn't intervene? It would be a repeated situation. And it don't get better, it always get worse. So we need to change the narrative. Help me say we need to change the narrative. Because children are imitators. We got to be careful. And I, and I know many parents and many people, uh, and I know back in the day, that's what used to be a normal saying. You say, well, why are you taking all that abuse? And sometimes the fathers were not good role models. But they stay there and say, God, because I'm staying here because of y'all. Y'all don't have to hear you leave me on this. But I didn't hear this voice more than one time. She said, I'm staying here because of y'all. Because they did not want to separate the family. Amen. Even though they was taking the abuse from the other spouse, they was willing to keep the family together. Yeah. And they took it. But now they, man, this generation say, you act crazy, I'm out of here. You do something that I don't like, I'm out of here. Irreconcilable differences. As they would say, I'm trying to still figure out what is that. But they left for minimal reasons. Some things I just don't like the way you cook, you burn my toes. So what? Teach her how to cook. Hey man, y'all looking at me funny. But they didn't break up over anything. I've been with you too long. It's been seven years. It's time for us to get out separate ways. What? What did I do? I don't think I like you no more. But you say for better off or worse, or richer off or poorer, yes. and sickness and in hell. Yes. So what part of that that you don't agree with me? Y'all don't like me this way. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what they see, they do. Yes. Nine times out of ten, they were imitated. Yes. So I have an answer for you. As I gave you earlier, St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 48. Y'all write that down, and I'm going to close in a few moments. Yes, sir. I'm going to pray for But Jesus says these words, Be ye therefore perfect, mm -hmm. even yes. as your Father, oh. which is in heaven, is perfect. Yes. Hallelujah. So even today, if your father was a failure, mm -hmm. if your dad was absent, you don't have to be like your dad. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. You still have a role model to follow. Mm -hmm. So there is no excuse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to stand for the next few moments. So what is God's perfect role model? Mm -hmm. If you want to know what God's perfect role model is, or Father, study the Son. Mm -hmm. Jesus said this concerning himself. When you see me, you see my dad. Amen. I'm just paraphrasing. Is that what he said? Amen. When you see me, they say, who are you, man? Who are you? When you see me, you see my father. Because what my father do is what he said. Because that's what the father has projected. Jesus is the perfect son provided by the perfect father.
which gave us the perfect role model for fatherhood. That which my father do, I do. Didn't they say that? I'm trying to help somebody today. That which is my father, I'm just doing what he did. That's right. So guess what happens in our, in our cases? Oftentimes we do what our fathers do. That's why we need good role models. We need good fathers. We need to yeah, re yeah. reframe this and set a different model, a different example of what fatherhood is all about. It's not being the big blowhard. It's, it's not being just breath and riches. Y'all with me? Yeah, but you need to set an example yeah. for your children to follow. Give them something to aspire to. And yes, it's going to be difficult, but you can do it with the help of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when a man really makes his mind up to live for God, all types of, of things are going to come at him. Yes, sir. Because that's what the devil don't want you to do. Yeah. He don't want you to really be a good role model. He wants you to act a pure yes, fool. Can I say that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He wants you to act a fool. He say, yeah, that's what you do. That's what, man, you're showing macho. But macho is not always the answer. Uh -huh. Macho can get you in trouble. Glory to God. So we need something to identify with. Do not lose your identity. With my father, what I learned from this, and I can say this from a personal standpoint, may not have done all, all of the, the house, the yeah, I appreciate that, the car, yeah, but what he really taught me was work. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you gotta get a job. And that's why I'm hard on folks. You gotta get a, he had three jobs. And was bad, we were bad to get along. But he got up, he came home, he went to bed, he got up and went to work. He came back home, went to bed, got up and went to work. Mom said, you better not knock on that door. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to catch the ball with me. Come on, let's play catch. He said, you better not knock on that door. Mm -hmm. But that man had to get up and go to work the next day. Mm -hmm. He had time to sit and spend the quality time. I thought he needed to spend some more time with me. I thought I'll have to act out. I'll get his attention. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I was going to get a whooping because I was going to keep it. That's right. what I was going to get. Y'all were tired and frustrated and mad. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he taught me work. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what did Jesus say? I must work the work of him that fits me. Father's day. Because the night coming. When that dark period in your life comes, you may not have the ability. You may be past the flower of your age. You may not be able to do what you wanted to do. Don't let this time pass. Now is the time to live. Wake up now. I don't know who I'm talking to it, but wake up now. Glory to God. The average man is struggling with his identity. You get that from your father. I get my identity from my father. My wife still called me by my daddy name. And y'all know that name, you better not say it though, no. y'all. <laughs> she still called me. That's been since 1972. But she knew who my daddy was, and she called me by my daddy's name. Don't you? Amen. You get your identity from your father. It is a man. If a man has no identity, then he is unidentified. He doesn't know who he is. Whereas he wears other people. I hope I'm making this point. Yes, sir. The father has to give the son a hallelujah. Yes. The father has to give the son a sense of identity. Mm -hmm. They say, You are Jones, boy. Jones, boys don't mean this. You are Smith. Smiths don't. Y'all hear me today. Yes, sir. Glory to God. The first thing that God gave Adam was image. Let us make man in our Genesis 1 and 26. If a man does not have a clear concept of who he is, he is confused. He's schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. On Monday, he is one thing. Then on Tuesday, he's somebody else. Oh yeah. Then another thing on Wednesday. He is constantly changing because he's trying to find out who am I. Mm -hmm. Wife don't know who you are. Who did I marry? What you, what's going on with you? Brother, we've got to be able to identify. God revised the model. Mm -hmm. St. John 5 and 13, I hope y'all writing this down. In there, the Pharisees accused Jesus of being equal with God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, but that was right up his life. Yes, God. And Jesus said in verse 19, and I mentioned that Jesus answered and said unto them, early, early, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he said the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, 
these also doeth the Son likewise. Uh -huh. That taught me something. All right, yo. Daddy said, so you got to work, and that's what I do. Even though sometimes I didn't want to get up, I said, because I got this girl and these children, I need to get my butt up and work. Else uh -huh. my hands. Uh -huh. Because they are my responsibility. Yeah. Are, I'm covering them. Mm -hmm. I'm sustaining them. I'm providing for them. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I've set that example for yes. myself mm -hmm. to follow. Because I don't want to be the example. I don't want to be the excuse. And y'all heard me say it. Okay. Don't be the excuse, but be the example. That's right. Yeah. Right. Don't give your children an excuse right. Right. to not to, to honor you, not to, to not to be the person that God called you to be. And I'm praying for children now, and I'm going to pray for everybody. But being today is Father's Day. Children model what they see of their father. Sons and daughters imitate very well, but God is our model. Best thing a man can do for his children is show his children how to love and care for the mothers and how to love and care for their families. Don't confuse fatherhood with being with having children. Right. Anybody can have children. Uh -huh. But anybody can't function as a father. That's right. While I hands so bowed and while my eyes are closed, Father, I thank you today you. for being the perfect example. God, you showed me through time and experience how I must change some of the things that I was doing because it was toxic. It was counterproductive for my families. But because you told me I had to provide, I had to sustain, I had to cover them, it brought me into a better relationship with you. I can understand it now. And God, I pray now that you would place in the minds of these young men that are listening to me right now, these young men that, that have families that will soon to be fathers, that those that are looking for wives, that those that are seeking other things by which to join the families together. God, I pray now that you would give them the sense of direction, that you would give them the identity that they so desperately need as men in this day and in this time. God, we pray that you would have your way in their life, that you would provide for them, that you would open, hallelujah, the doors that's closed in their faces. God, I pray that you would bind the hand of the enemy that seeks to destroy them on every turn. God, we come against that demonic spirit that would try to, to annihilate them and to disqualify them for being the men that you're calling for in this last day. God, we thank you now for what you've done and what you're doing, oh God. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. And God, we submit ourselves unto you. You're the author. You're the finisher of our faith. And God, you've already done for us. Hallelujah. We appreciate what you're doing even right now as you're bringing about an awareness of our families and our relationship with our wives, with our children. And how best be the example, the role model for them to follow. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your spirit. And we thank you for your word that never changes. And God, as we submit ourselves unto you today, we ask that you would bless each and every family that's represented here on the day. God, we ask even now that you would forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord. Forgive us for our iniquities. If we've been disrespectful, if we've been unhonorable. Hallelujah. To our parents, God, we ask that you help us today. Help us, Lord, not to continue the trend. But God, help us to break the cycle. Help us to break the curse. In the name of Jesus, that would cause the enemy to have the victory. To get the advantage over our families. God, as we continue to celebrate. Hallelujah. What you've already done. How you brought us, oh God. How you kept us. In the name of Jesus. We pray your deliverance and a breakthrough in the lives of these your people. God, you say you bless them that bless you. God, help us to bless you. And we'll bless you back. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 We praise and we magnify him now. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. We thank God for you today. Uh, yes. We hope that we've said something. Yes, sir. This was not what some of you may have been looking for. Amen. But that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, so that because the truth is the only thing that's going to be to make us free. Can't get saved right with wrong teaching. Amen. Can't get saved right 
because the Bible is right and somebody is wrong. Yes, and we believe that model on the day. The Lord bless you for so I want to pray for this baby. Come on, Mother Bird. I want to pray for this baby. There may be others of you among us that are desire of prayer. I want to pray for this young child. Amen. The Bible says, um, children come to this. Come in as we come to the Lord. God blesses the children. Jesus loves the little children, all of the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are all what? Precious in his sight. It Jesus is. loves the little children of the world. I want to pray God's blessing upon her. I don't have a mask on me, neither do I have my gloves at this time, but I know, amen, that prayer works. And I want amen. To stand right here, even if you will, and just anoint that baby with oil. And we believe in God's going to bless her. I thank God for Mother Bird. She, has, she is a mother indeed. And our mother has compassion for other mothers. Yes. Amen. Yes. And when we see that, that compassion, that compassion element yes. will show up in a mother's life. Amen. Yes. Thank you. That compassion element will show up. I'm asking you to stand because we're praying for this baby that the Lord will bless him. Yes, sir. The trials that even the babies experience now. Amen. A lot of us, I don't know, amen, but God brought us to get through it. And he's going to do the same for this young baby. And as I stretch my hand towards you, Mother Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know already what need be done. Lord, we ask you to intervene in the life of this young baby. You know the plans that you have for them to bring them to an expected end. And God, we believe in now on the, uh, on the faith of this mother, on the faith of this friend that have intervened on behalf of the mother that need so desperately need your help. God, touch this baby. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Heal her, God. Bring them to pass that which you promised. Hallelujah. That you would touch and deliver as only you can. God, I know you're able. You can do anything but fail. All powers in your hand today. And we trust you and believe. God, give the strength. Give the courage that's needed in order to be the overcome. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we decree now. Heal this body. Touch now from the very crown of the head to the very sole of the feet. And God will give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you all the honor yes. that you would bless us and keep us. And God, and we'll tell men that you did it. We won't take any of your credit, but we'll say that you brought us and you delivered us. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God say, amen. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord for this baby. Bless your mother. Amen.